we can use linear inequalities to set up a system of constraints. We can use this system to find optimal solutions for challenges like minimizing pollution or maximizing family income. Let's take a moment to review what solutions to systems of linear inequalities look like. So here we have a system of linear inequalities. We have two lines drawn. And we're wondering which of these points are solution, solutions to that system. Now we notice one of the lines is solid and one is dashed. The points along the solid line are solutions to that particular inequality. But the points along the dashed line are not solutions to that inequality. So we want to choose the points that are in this shaded area where the shading overlaps or along this line here the solid line that's in this particular region. All right, so the point zero, zero, well, that's outside of the region that where the shading overlaps. So that is not a solution to this system of inequalities. The point one, negative three, well, that's a solution to one of the inequalities, but not the other one. So that's not a solution to the system either. Point three, four is in the region where the shading overlaps for both inequalities. So that is a part of the solution to the system of inequalities. You better check these others though, because there might be more than one answer. Four, negative six. Well, this is an interesting one. It's right at the intersection of the solid line and the dashed line. Now, it is a solution to one of the inequalities but not the one with the dashed line because the points along the dashed line are not part of its solution. So not that one. And negative one, negative two is a solution to neither of the inequalities, so definitely not that one. That's our only solution was three, four. All right, now we need to graph this linear inequality. Well, we have a y-intercept of 1, so that's going to be our beginning point. So we'll move one of these points to 1 on the y-axis, since that's our y-intercept. Then we have a slope of 5. Well, that means we need to move up 5 and right 1. And we'll go ahead and do that from this y-intercept. So from the y-intercept, we'll go up 5 and right 1. Okay, now we need to think about the shading and what kind of line. The inequality here, greater than or equal to, means shade above the line. So the shading is above the line. If we needed to change that, we would click toggle shading. And it's greater than or equal to, so that means we need a solid line because the points on the line itself are part of the solution to this inequality. So I'm going to toggle the dashed line to a solid line. So there, there we have our graph of y is greater than or equal to 5x plus 1. All right, now we are going to create a set of inequalities that describe any point inside the triangle drawn below. Give your answers in slope-intercept form. Okay, now notice they said inside the triangles. So think of these sides of the triangle as dashed lines because we only want points inside the triangle, not on the triangle itself. So all of our inequalities will be either less than or greater than without the equal bar. For the inequality we're going to write for the bottom side of the triangle, now we want it to be shaded above because that's where the points inside the triangle will be. So that'll be y is greater than. Remember, even though it's a solid line here, we only want the points inside the triangle, so that does not include the points on the triangle itself. Now the slope of this line is up 1 over 3. So I was using this y-intercept here and this point over here. So going left to right, I went up 1 over 3. So if y is greater than 1 third x, and now minus six for the y-intercept. So this inequality is in slope-intercept form. So that's for the 
bottom side of that triangle. Now let's go over to the right side of the triangle. Okay, we'll be shading below this line to get the points inside the triangle. So that'll be y is less than. Now we need the slope. So I'm going to take find two points here. I'll use the y-intercept. And from there, slide to the right until I get another perfect point. And there's one right there. And from that first point to the second point, I went down to right one. So down to right one. Well, that just equals negative two, because this one in the denominator doesn't matter. So we have a slope of negative two. Now I just need the y-intercept, and that's up here at eight. That's where this line intersects the y-axis. So plus eight. So that's my inequality for the line on the right side. Remember, it's an inequality because we want to shade the inside of the triangle. Okay, finally, the left side of the triangle. Once again, we want to shade below this line to get the points inside the triangle. So that'll be less than. Let's figure out the slope. So I'm on the left side of the triangle here. So I'll use this y-intercept here. And just sliding along that line until I get another perfect point. I find one here. So from going left to right, I went up 5, right 1. So up 5, right 1. Well, that just equals 5. So I have a slope of 5. So I have y is less than 5x plus 8. Because that's our y-intercept. So these three inequalities serve as a system of constraints that helped us highlight the solution region where the points inside the triangle are. In this question, we are going to write a system of linear inequalities that will describe the constraints to this particular situation. So let's read about the requirements for hydroponic plants. For plants to grow successfully in a hydroponic system, they need at least 6 and at most 11 hours of sunlight. They also need to be at a temperature higher than 68 degrees Fahrenheit and lower than 87 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the plant. Write a system of linear inequalities in slope-intercept form that describes the constraints of the situation. Use the variable y to represent hours of sunlight and x for temperature. Do not solve. So we'll be using x for temperature and y for hours of sunlight. All right, we have four constraints described in this particular problem here. They need at least six hours of sunlight. Sometimes if you think of some of these phrases in terms of money, it helps you figure out which inequality you need to use. So if I have at least six dollars, that means I might have six dollars or I might have more. So in other words, y is greater than or equal to 6, but at most 11 hours of sunlight. So that's our next one, at most 11. So if I have at most $11, I might have $11 or I might have less. So that would be y is less than or equal to 11. So I have y is greater than or equal to 6, y is at least 6, and y is less than or equal to 11, or at most 11. All right, let's go to the temperature. The temperature has to be higher than 68. Well, that would be not including 68, because 68 is not higher than 68. So I need x to be greater than 68, higher than 68 but lower than 87. So that would be x is less than 87. So here we have a system of linear inequalities, four of them, that serve as a system of constraints. Now, let me just take just a moment to sketch out a brief graph of this to kind of highlight what's going on here. So if I have temperature along my x-axis, and hours of sunlight 
on my y-axis, well, I have constraints for the hours of sunlight. Like this might be the one that says it can't be more than 11. And this might be the one that says it has to be at least six. And then we have a constraint that says it has to be greater than 68 degrees, but less than 87 degrees. Let's see, less than 87 degrees would be to the left of that line. Greater than 68 would be to the right of that line. Greater than or equal to 6 would be above this line. And less than or equal to 11 would be below that line. Well, the region where all of that overlaps is in here. So this would be the region where we would have successful hydroponic plants. OK, I hope these examples about writing constraints with multiple inequalities has been helpful. My name is Mr. Ela, signing off.